just me and Shiva. What is fear and is it is that real? So it appears at the, if there is danger around you, fear is an instinctual reaction of a body where because of flight and fright mode you just run away from the danger but this sense of fear which uh, protects you is there within you so that you can survive uh, from the conditions but uh, there are other kinds of fears which might not be real but we go through such psychological fears thinking that something will happen in the future and which might cause problem for me So the future we don't know how it's going to be right so the fear can i term it as uh, fear for the survival it's true that's fear mm. but any other kind of fear is false any kind of fear which we go through which is does not have any uh, real basis hi Dr. Nutter. Hi, Indy. Hi, Shiva. Hi, Mahindra. Hello. Hello. So, you ask what is real? <laughs> yeah, I mean to answer your question. I need to know what is real. Okay. The general perception of the real is uh, something which, which, which is perceivable. which is experienceable and something which is uh, which is uh, right in front of you like which you call it which you call as true so something that is experienced is real that's what i understood correct yeah we can go call it like that yes but, oh. but we experience when we experience certain things which are not real so outrightly we can't call exactly but it it fits into that particular bracket probably something which people can objectively experience is real right like you know i can experience it you can experience it then maybe it's real hmm we can call it so yeah yeah in that way i think fear is very real i mean um almost all the people that i came across experience fear um, the extent to which they experience it is different but everybody experiences fear and uh, the way people react to it also is different but surely i i never met any person who didn't um, experience fear so i think fear is real i agree but uh, i mean now just the shiva was telling there are two kinds of fears the first one is uh, the fear of survival the second one is uh, the 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 anxiety about the future people get confused between the anxiety about the future as fear that's what shiva was term so but but that's a good point amazing point so, uh, doctor when man try to move into unknown uh, basically the fear is about uh, unknown and the source of uh, when you go to the core of uh, fear it it comes to identity and uh, death man one uh, man fears because to enter into the unknown dimension or uh, in 
to come out of comfort zone because there is a sense of uh, fear of non existence shiva that is flying over my head i have to put it in my my small terms okay but let's this meanwhile let's listen from kamaya ji and then we'll come back to you shiva kamaya ji how are you what is your take on this topic did you mean what shiva said slip from the peak okay he went above the peak <laughs> mind speak right so <laughs> uh, it cannot go above the peak right i mean yeah. if, if it went above the peak that's not the peak yeah, then it fell from the peak <laughs> it is no yeah. it, it, it didn't it's fall fear, from right? something uh, some things are imagined fears and some things are uh, real uh, fear inducing right like for example a terrorist attack happens they induce fear in everybody everybody feels that we are the same way but there are individual individuals who experience fear is uh, imagine fear sometimes and also they create these layers for themselves where they have to start fearing for example one day i was actually uh, at work and uh, i have prepared a demo for one of my product and one of my directors came and said you be careful when you're demoing people would like to go and look under the skirt what's under the skirt so i said i'll come naked so what fear will i have i don't need to worry if somebody is going to look under the skirt so the point is some people create layers for themselves where they want to hide their identity for example uh, and they're afraid that their identity will be disclosed uh, and they fear so they create these layers of fear for example i have my name as it is in records so i have no fear everybody knows who i am but certain people like to have some screen name and they don't want their identity to be revealed so in case if their identity is revealed or somebody will reveal their identity they constantly in fear so this is imagined or real it, it is definitely real for them but it is an imaginary layer which they created for uh, for this fears to come in thank you well any reality it could also be imagination in that perspective but thanks a lot kamaji hi karen how are you so what is your take on this topic uh hi i'm good um the take on the topic is fear is an is a physical expression to a perceived threat um it is the body's way of letting you know that there might be danger this is my introduction for now thank you thank you karen hey subhash how are you what is your take on the topic sorry i just came so i want to play some more okay thank you still i don't know what i sure so shiva did you did you reframe it to a my level yeah <laughs> so basically fear is uh, fear and identity is uh, very linked uh, very much linked to each other uh, we identify ourselves with uh, our past uh, sometimes and when we remember those experiences where we suffered and we think that they might happen to us again so and we worry or we fear about it and most of the time uh, this physic when we make identities we hold on to that identity and when somebody argues or when, when somebody questions our identity and talks again against our identity then we try to protect it that's a, it's a kind of psychological um, fear where you are holding on to an identity whether it is a religion whether it is a community any kind of identity so that is what i want to say we'll speak more 
Okay. <clears throat> any counters? Uh, any questions yeah. to Shiva? Uh, I have no counters, but I want to put it in a different way. So I agree that actually a lot of fear um, is coming, or maybe all the fear is coming only from identity, right? Uh, but I will put it in pragmatic terms, uh, in normal, non spiritual words. So, for example, you fear that you may lose your life. Um, that is again coming because you identify the life is yours, right? And you may fear that some of your uh, closest family members or friends, um, uh, maybe you know, they, be, they don't. You, you may lose them. That is also fear. You may fear that you will lose your material possessions. You may fear that you will lose your job. You may fear. Basically, I mean, everything what you are fearing, it can be also your country. You may fear that it will not be a democracy anymore. Um, so everything is at the end of the day linked to identity. So that is completely correct. Um, but then again, if you are really spiritual and you say you have, there are no identities and all these are human constructs and this is not real, then of course fear is not real for you and it is irrational. On the other hand, if you are a person who actually accepts this world as a reality, then that fear is completely real and justified. Yeah, na ko ka perception ikkada kunsun different gan bichindi. Adi scientific basis me da ya bhai ya. Chappa chha. Yeah, sorry to interrupt you. Ma, we we'll talk in English and uh, in mind speak. Okay, okay. Uh, one perception is very interesting for me. See, actually, uh, amygdala, which is present in the temporal lobe of your brain, is responsible for the fear. it uh, regulates the conditioning reflexes i mean say if you see a tiger then uh, automatically it gives the stimulus and uh, you'll run away see this conditioned reflexes uh, someone mentioned that uh, in spirituality the identity is uh, something which they consider that everyone is uh, a person there is no identity that thing this thing there uh, these guys i mean Uh, those who believe in this are slowly slowly conditioning their visual stimulus and uh, their mindset and uh, uh, hearing stimulus in such a way that okay uh, there is no difference uh, between i mean they are conditioning their amygdala to react in such a way that uh, you are a human being piece of flesh and the other person is also a human being piece of flesh you need not be frightened i found this some sort of interesting yeah that's it okay that that in cases of bhaiya english lo cheppadam inka konja kashtanga anipinchindi andukane konja confusing undochemo le ledu you did you did a great job so because we have a, a because wine speak is english and my medo shikram is telugu and we have lot of people who don't understand telugu in this club and so we'll, ikkada we'll have the yeah real real la nichar kada topic heading if amygdala is removed there is a syndrome called cloverbus syndrome vallaki bayam anedhe ento teliyadu bhaiya they did an experiment on monkeys they just removed the two amygdalas from the monkeys and these monkeys are not afraid of anything they can even face uh, their death also so the center for <laughs> fear is amygdala and if you remove that you will not have any fear uh, when you don't have fear you can become a fool also because uh, yeah that uh, monkey will die it. right it will fearlessly go to the crocodile and it will die so amygdala is one thing which is making you uh, act smartly act uh, to allow you to survive actually because if you don't have fear you might kill yourself very easily so fear is a very important factor uh, but again uh, i have to talk about a different kind of a fear here sometimes i uh, fear comes from doubt right uh, so i uh, in, in even in language we say i fear i uh, uh, you understood what i said sometimes I mean, uh, when i'm trying to explain something and the other person is not in the same thought plane 
there is a fear of misunderstandings right so it's also a possibility it's, it's something like that so it's about a doubt a doubtfulness also will bring in fear so is doubtfulness real or false it depends right it depends on the perception there so doubtfulness is another a big confusion factor for me i, I always get confused the doubt is again so much linked to the anxiety about the future so i don't know why i'm getting the sense that fear is not real uh, because we are just uh, getting anxiety about the future and then uh, which is not which is not happening right now so future is not real too it could happen and maybe we are uh, you know this understanding anxiety as a fear but there is a sense of fear let's say uh, even in, even let's say you you're facing a tiger tiger can pounce upon you it can eat you that's one uh, that's one condition or tiger a tiger can run away from you that's another condition right so why why we choose to pounce upon you and it will eat me is because of the our evolutionary uh, memory or data or uh, other things which which come as a part of our survival programming and that that makes sense however in that scenario also fear is just about anxiety about the future is it real that's the question so fear as a feeling is certainly real but uh, fear can that happen that that's what we are trying to understand so i want to welcome hari monica and karen you have something to say please go ahead yeah to as a reaction to what you said so fear is basically subjective to um knowledge if you understand something uh the fear will go away a lot of people as have a fear of death because they do not understand the process or they do not know what it is so it is definitely subjective to uh the reason uh, the the amount of knowledge what they have in understanding amazing so knowledge is the one which actually uh, you know counters or controls fear that's amazing awesome awesome so not always okay can you define that not always okay let me explain so i i touched this also earlier uh, if you are on spiritual plane or if you are on real plane i mean this world has a real reality um so let let us assume i was a kid i didn't had the knowledge that the fire can burn me uh, and the moment i gained the knowledge i got fear so basically what actually gave me fear is the knowledge the same thing is also true for many things right so if you look at um, um let us say there are some uh, people who are killing right and if you don't know about them you don't have the fear but the moment you gain that knowledge you again gain fear climate um catastrophes that are going on as long as we didn't know uh, about uh, greenhouse effect in etc etc we didn't have that fear but now we have that fear also so knowledge actually indulges a lot of fear um i i accept uh, karin's point uh, like you know if you really go in deep then in some cases you will not have the fear I disagree with you. <laughs> For the simple reason is that uh if you're open-minded enough in order to experience the knowledge what you have and put it into practice, then you will find out that the fear was not real. How often go we go into life and we start planning um this is how I am going to react if I'm in a certain situation. and how often does it happen that something totally different happens that what you thought it was um the knowledge in this reality what we are in i know when i go to a crocodile and i go in the water i'm going to be bitten and that is the the loss of this reality what we are living in so logically you are not going to go in the water unless you have a death wish uh and and be bitten by the crocodile so those kind of things we first learn because we are actually very logical beings and as long as we are willing to expand beyond um and include the experience and the emotion into the moment that you are experiencing have both 
then you create wisdom. That wisdom you're going to apply to future happenings. Because you know already, wisdom has told you that you are not knowing what, how you're going to react in the moment uh, of the future. So you're going to have to wait till that moment arrives. So in that aspect, you can reduce the fear to zero of how I don't know how I'm going to react or this or that. So it is definitely subjective. My speaker may I respond, or you want to go to other speakers? No, no, we are in we are in discussion mode, but we still have Hari and Monica. Uh, so um, once let's complete them, I have stopped the hand raising. Uh, so Hari, what is your take on the topic? Quick and short, and then we'll go with Monica, and then we'll get back to discussion mode. Uh, Doctor Notel, please keep ready. Uh, I mean, keep your argument ready <laughs> for Karen. Hari, what is your take on the topic? Hari calling once, calling twice. Okay. Hari is in glitch, maybe. Monica, what is your take on the topic? Hi, everyone. Uh, very interesting conversation. Uh, so, I I'm trying to understand more questions with the answers I have. But why do you guys think that fear is not real? What if I fear comes true? You know, let's say I fear of a heartbreak and it actually comes yeah. true. It is coming true, right? It is not happening right now. It is coming true. You, you yourself but, said that. But that doesn't mean that the fear wasn't real. The fear was real, right? No, if, if it happens, it's real. What if heart doesn't break? What if you're but happy? But if, if it happens, it could be real. Then if it is so, happens, if, if there is a condition there, if. So when there is any condition, if, then how is it real? But real if it is real, happen. then it is real, right? You cannot generalize that fears are unreal. You experience okay. it as being real. No, but no, yes. it is real. So what I, I trouble understanding. What do you mean by experiencing it real? I fear of an accident and I met that accident. It's not the experience of accident. It is, it is a fact. So in such cases, the fear is real, right? Okay, let me ask you something. Yeah. Monica, what, what's happening? See, whenever you are in fear, what is happening? Right at the moment, you go to any, pick up any situation in your life and uh, look into that situation where you are fearing right now. Then what is happening? Okay, what's let happening? me give you a situation. Let's say I fear of accident of my friend and I don't know. But at the same time, this accident is actually happening. No, where is it? If, if, if it happens, then you are witnessing it. No, not in front of my eyes. So I'm not witnessing it. But that doesn't remain the fact that so it you, never happened. Have, okay, got, I got your, I got the point totally. I got you. So basically, you have an intuition of an accident, and it's happening. It's yeah, happening. that's the fear, right? And you, and you do not have knowledge of it, right? Yes, because if I have knowledge of but, it, but then you, it's a confirmation. But you still correct, correct, Log, logical. So you are sensing there has been an accident. There could be an accident or there is an accident happening. Just like a mother cares about uh, her, her child. 100% correct, yes. yes. I, I got, uh, oh wow, that's amazing. It's a very good uh, twist to the story. Amazing, Monica, thanks for bringing it up. Let's see what uh, others have got to say. That's a good discussion. Uh, that, that kind of coincides with what Dr. Notel was telling. Uh, let's see what Karen and Shiva have got to answer. I, even I too feel that theory is not real, but I am ready to change my stance. But let's see. Subhash, you have anything to add? Uh, we'll get into discussion more. No, no, no. Um, I want to listen more. Yeah, ask any questions if, if you think, uh, you know. You, okay, guys, we are in discussion mode right now. Uh, Dr. Nate noted you had, uh, uh, you wanted to you know, come back with Karen and then you can know. And then uh, we have an open question from Monica, which, which, which she has given a wonderful situation to us. Like, let's say, uh, I will I will take the example and put it in another way. Uh, a mother fears of her child when the child is playing in an open ground or in a forest or in a park, the fear of falling and these things. Can we analyze that and try to understand that uh, if that happens, can that be real? If the, it's not happening, can that be real? If it's parallelly happening, can that be real? First, we'll go to Notel and then we'll open the floor for discussion. Notel. 
Uh, my speak, I think you just said something. Uh, I I do not want to talk about that. So maybe if somebody wants to respond to that, maybe they can respond. Uh, I want to go back to what Karin was telling earlier. Yeah, that's what that's, that's what I was asking. Yeah, okay. What Monica what Monica was bringing up, uh, if you look at it from the point from where you're at, if you're identified with your body and mind, yes, she is totally right. It's a real experience, and if you go to your intuition. Um, and uh, finding out later that it has happened, you are not actually the witness of the the um, the thing itself, the accident itself, but you have created a situation within yourself, and part of your energy has um, has concluded that. And it's a conclusion, and that has to do, uh, do with time and space and a whole lot of things. I cannot explain it from the point of reality. I'm sorry. All right. Okay. Uh, by yeah, of mention. Oh, okay, okay. Doctor, no take and right. please. No, I, I think we are, you know, making a lot of claims and then moving very quickly. So I would really like to go back to one of the claims that was made earlier. Um, so the claim uh, Karin made, I think, if I understood her correctly, is that if you have knowledge, then the fear will be removed, right? And I accept that claim, but I would say it's only partially true because the other part of the claim in, in which I'm making right now is that in many cases having that knowledge actually makes you fearful right so the moment you gain the knowledge you gain the fear and so my claim basically is that yes in some cases knowledge uh, removes the pain uh, or fear in some cases knowledge actually make you fearful uh, if anybody has objection to this uh, i can explain no, not objection but i, I second you uh, the more knowledge you have the more fear you have also because you have a fear of failing because you have a fear of you'll you'll know more what about the consequences the less i've seen a lot of successful people with less knowledge uh, in doing certain things because they don't know the consequences they got in and they got lucky or uh, at least they could do things but with uh, more knowledge people become still they might not be able to move or act, actually speaking, because of all the possible fears. You're right, Notel, I second the thought. Uh, what if new knowledge gets introduced? New knowledge. Not the knowledge what you are aware of, but your awareness expand, uh, includes different kind of knowledge. Will the fear still be there? That's on a positive note. Will the fear still be there? Will it be less? Will it be gone? Will it increase? What if new knowledge is being introduced without going into your memory and into your experience of the past and you open yourself up to um, we will see what happens accepting the situation what is and without um, going into the memory of that fear. So you're going to let go of that memory and you're going in open-minded with new knowledge. Uh, maybe my mind uh, is wrong and maybe the fear, I'm going to challenge it and I'm going to introduce new information. And if you ask the question, uh, I want to uh, challenge this fear or I want to see if it is real or I want to experience it as being less, then you automatically start looking at ways in order to reduce that fear. Um, the, the search for knowledge is very important from the perception of why you are seeking that knowledge. Yes, I can find knowledge in order to make the fear go, grow bigger, but I also can find knowledge and and tools in the outside world in order to make that fear smaller. So it depends on your intention, what you want to do with that fear. It's uh, more than knowledge. It's wisdom which might reduce your fear, but not exactly knowledge. Knowledge will only 
open up more Pandora's boxes, basically. But if you have enough wisdom, uh, you know exactly how to apply the knowledge, the knowledge of applying the knowledge, then it might reduce the fear. But by default, knowledge can only increase your fear. Yes, but the knowledge you first take from the outside. So I'm, I have a fear of spiders. I can do two things, just accept the fear and live the rest of my life with that knowledge. Or I actually can challenge myself to explore that fear. Why am I having this fear? Uh, is there a way to control this fear or get rid of it altogether? And then your search for a solution starts. So it depends on the focus on your mind if you are have a pos- positive focus on it or a negative one or a close-minded one like this is not possible. If you say this is not possible, yes, then you're going to stay right where you are. You have to have an open mind in order to find a solution. I think the important point here to um, um, differentiate between exceptions and general, right? We're talking, I think, at least I'm speaking from general perspective. And knowledge is not a pill which you can take and then you got all the knowledge. So I'm referring to this more uh, more information point of view, right? So there is no point at which you can just say that, okay, now I gain all the knowledge and I have no fear anymore. So actually, Karin, if you look at your points, you actually agree with me that indeed some knowledge introduces fear and some knowledge may not introduce fear. And depending upon which state you are in, and which knowledge you are actually gaining, either your fear will grow or your fear will reduce. And uh, so basically, yeah, I think the claim uh, still holds. Some knowledge introduces fear and uh, sometimes knowledge can also remove fear. Yes, and that is where your application of that knowledge uh, comes into play. So yes, sorry, then I had misunderstood your uh, initial uh, claim. Great. Since that's clarified, uh, mind speak. Sorry if I'm speaking too much. You can stop me anytime. Uh, so I think we went on a tangent anyway with that argument, but I just wanted to make sure. Uh, I think mind speak's main point uh, is if your fear is based on future, and the future is not that happened, then it is not real, right? So my response to that, based on what Monica has said earlier, the fear is absolutely real, right? Because you're feeling it right now there is no doubt if fear is real or not even the future happens or doesn't happen that doesn't matter the fear is now happening and it is real the question the more interesting question will be is that fear rational because the moment you say rational then you have to consider if the event is going to happen in future or not and if it is not going to happen and you're still fearing then you have a irrational fear that's probably what monica was actually saying right yeah, yeah, sorry, we, we, we kind of spoke on each other, Shiva, Shu, Subhash, Gadam. who wants to speak now? Yeah, I'd like... I feel like uh, I'm going to die right now. Like, it, it is the kind of fear, right? Like, I'm going to die right now. What do you say about it? Like, you know... No, that has... That needs it's not about the future, that, right? Yeah, Subhash, for that, you need a, a, a claim, like, why, why are you thinking? And is that rational or not, as uh, Dr. Notel has just mentioned? But if it is a biological issue, I mean, it's not about the thinking. If it is a biological issue or any mental issue where you face, you know. Yeah, I'd like to uh, tell a bit detail if you agree. Hello. Yeah. Hello, Bhaiya Chapata. Sure, sure. One minute. Yeah. Before before you go, Karen has something to say. Karen, uh, please go ahead. It's okay. I'll listen first. I forgot my point. Okay. All right. Yeah. Got them. And then Shiva, you had something to say too. Yes. Yes. I'll speak after. Them. Okay. Got them. Go ahead. Okay. See, fear. Uh, first, consider fear as two entities. First thing is the physical entity. Second thing is the emotional entity or the uh, what the people are saying like future thing or that thing that is a uh, thinking that ability uh, that entity physical entity is like looking at a crocodile and being frightened see actually fear is 
a part of your defense mechanism see consider say uh, just think freely you are in front of a tiger you then experience uh, the fear fear of the actual mechanism here is you see the uh, tiger and you will be frightened that your body or the tish uh, the body parts or your life will be endangered so you, uh, your body try to react to that in a protective mechanism in that fear either your uh, uh, brain starts functioning and uh, it gives commands to your uh, legs and hands to run away or to face i mean to think it is just a first step in facing the body defense i mean it is the first step of protective mechanism of your body coming to the emotional entity there uh, say example you are frightened that you will be insulted by someone while giving a seminar or discussing a topic or such thing see example you see your kid playing in the open field and uh, you are frightened of being taken away by the uh, decoids that is an emotional entity because there your body is not getting harmed there something uh, your mind is thinking i mean there first uh, the mind starts thinking and it tries to analyze the situation it gives command according to uh, your understanding of the situation see for ev uh, for every individual the level the of maturity or the way they act is completely different see for example if one person uh, looks there and uh, see his kid playing in the ground and finds him uh, in falling in danger then he thinks that okay i have to go there and act immediately or uh, some other people think that uh, i have to send someone uh, to get there it is i feel that it is a first step of protective mechanism you can act in two ways first thing is either you can act or second thing is you can think uh, accordingly and try to manage the situation in future or at present that thing yeah this is my view thank you awesome thank you so guys um, i just wanted to be cognizant of the fact that uh, you know we we close the room in another 10 minutes so uh, help me out uh, by uh, making it quick and fast statements and uh, and then we'll get to the conclusion so shiva you had a point uh, and then karen had a point shiva and then followed by karen yeah. so what uh, gadam has said uh, about the fear of uh, danger which is have happening in real if the danger is real if there is tiger before you and you need to run you need to protect yourself that is a real uh, survival mechanism created for you but there are the different kinds of fear which are not real but we create uh, within our minds when you look and when you become aware in the moments of fear if you look at your own mind what happens is there are thoughts and images going before your awareness and basically you are not afraid of the uh, reality out there but you are afraid of your own thoughts so the thoughts uh, comes out of uh, uh, from our past experience we might have experienced in uh, uh, some pain and we don't want to repeat that pain in the future and we identified with that pain and we don't want it to repeat again the the mechanism is when you look deeper into this fear when you remove the fear word itself when you look at uh, the this combination of feelings and thoughts you just can see that it is just uh, your mental imagination at work in the present moment so really happening what you feared really happened not always happens it might be uh, once or twice but we fear in many instances many of our fears does not happen in the world
so we need to, when we look Thank deeper you, into Karen. this uh, yeah Karen. uh yes i'd like to go to dr no for a minute and i'll try she find there too uh dr no you said that uh the fear in is real yes it's only real in that moment that you feel it because your body experiences it uh and in that aspect you are totally right because uh you observe that feeling to be real my question is then are you able to let that fear go at that moment or are you carrying a mental remembering of that fear with you into your next moment so the next time when the situation happens the remembrance of that fear is coming back and attach with that is going to be the emotion so from that perspective uh you are carrying it with you and you can make it worse no doubt about it but then from chief's point of view because once you start realizing that um that you are observing the fear uh in your body and that you know you are not your body from that point of view you are not taking it with you it's easier to understand to take a distance of that fear that it is just an expression of your uh, of the experience of the mind but uh, are we in a premise that fear is bad or good are we thinking even in that angle no, no. Or only real fear, fear is real just or? natural fear <laughs> just is it's it's a natural phenomena it just yeah, is and we But gave it meaning it... we gave it meaning fear is yeah. a pr- we started out like that right in the beginning of the room that we decided that fear was a protection of uh who we are it's an expression of ne- of protection yeah so for example uh, when we take steve jobs he was mentioning that you know he kept this fear in his mind that he might die any day so he has to do every day the best and he tried to do perform the best every day because he knew that death is inevitable so he turned fear into strength sometimes you can turn fear into strength because it's just an emotion you can always convert so whether you want to make it real or or uh, completely ignore the fear it's it's a it's a tool mainly I would say no I'd so, like to add a point over here uh bhaiya I feel that uh, he just kept on putting uh, he just kept on re- remembering the fact that uh, life span is limited and one will die uh, at any point of time he is just keep he just kept on remembering that fact that is not a fear see if you find uh, a snake bitten you one in one hour you are going to die that is actually fear here steve job is just remembering the fact that life span has uh, this time so i have to act gadam i mentioned the same thing if you can think that okay any time i can die i may die i may die that becomes a fear but if you remember and keep it in a different way then it becomes a kind of uh, no, I, i think memory. he was not i feel that he kept on we didn't contradict here now when you're talking about a snake biting and when one or you'll die it's not fear it is biology that's how it works right it is not fear there if you're not treated you'll die so it's a, it's a, it's a, it's science there biology so the point what i was saying is i can always think that oh i might die any day and uh, i can give up on everything or i can think that i might die and and convert that fear into uh, something different also that's what i said so it depends on how you perceive fear right awesome chetu you were saying something like uh, the no one was able to hear that no uh, i don't think steve jobs was talking about uh, uh, you know it, it's it, it leans more towards you know motivation rather than you know fear of death or uh, uh, you know like it it goes more it's more like you know carpe diem got it actually okay. what so, guys, uh, uh, 
Shiva once again. I just want to have a small announcement. Uh, please uh, subscribe to YouTube channel, which is in the pinned link. Uh, we need more subscribers to create more content. Uh, that will be really helpful. And I'm trying to limit the content within one hour so that, uh, you know, listeners will be able to uh, enjoy the conversation. Uh, point number two is uh, if you have any topics, please uh, do follow me and uh, message uh, this profile of mine so that uh, we can create and schedule the topics. And uh, please be available whenever I schedule topics if you are interested in those topics so that we can discuss further and then get onto the YouTube. So basically, I'll be putting this all conversations as unedited format into the YouTube channel for you to uh, enjoy the conversation again, go back and listen to it. It's better than replace because uh, you can actually visualize what's happening and uh, also look and comment and uh, and other stuff. Uh, and then you can learn what is the best way to, uh, you know, to understand your own thought process or other thought process. So that matter, improvise oneself. Awesome. So uh, we just have uh, uh, eight more minutes. So if uh, please be cognizant of that, and then uh, and then let's get to the discussion or conclusion. So eight more minutes. I'll keep reminding uh, every two minutes. I just, yeah, Shiva, go ahead. Sorry, I just have a very small uh, feedback for you. I think you're doing pretty good in finding subjects to discuss. So I don't think you need us because your subjects are very. Uh, details and very interesting. So, oh, thank you so much, Karen. That's so that's so encouraging. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so I really I, want to listen to other perspective too. Yeah, I just want to say about uh, about uh, this particular thing, uh, Chetu. Uh, here I was mentioning about how you can, instead of fearing, you can look at it as a motivation. Also, it's right. We are not contradicting here. You are just saying the word. What is used is different. When I said I can fear in a different way that I might die, I, I, if I keep it in the fear syndrome, then I, I behave it differently. But if I keep it as a motivation, I do things differently, right? So there is something in the modern, uh, I mean, in the uh, social media right now, we, see, we hear a word called FOMO, fear of missing out, right? A lot of people do a lot of things because just with the fear of missing out. That fear is what is making a lot of people do a lot of things also in terms of education or in terms of doing things. FOMO uh, is one of the major players for the economy to run also, right? Uh, everything is running based on FOMO right now. So fear is, is also allowing you to do a lot of stuff, right, that way. But so you do agree that fear is not who you are. So because you are saying it's a tool to use, you are looking at that particular feeling as a tool to use in a positive or negative or whatever way you want. Yes, yes. For example, if I fear that I don't have the strength uh, or maybe if I fear that I don't have a particular thing and I might fail in one particular area or something, I can use that fear to learn and become stronger in that particular area, isn't it? If I, if I, it's all about what we are, how we are using the fear. Is it used to destroy yourself or is it, dis, is it to make you stronger? So fear is imaginary only. It's not 100% real, only in certain cases. <laughs> But most of the times, uh, fear is a tool only. It's not about real or, or false. It's more about a tool. No, no. I mean, uh, fear is entirely, uh, it's it's an emotion, right? I mean, it, it's it's entirely in your heads. Uh, outside our heads, uh, you know, uh, you know, the uh, it, uh, emotions doesn't exist, right? I mean, we are talking about an emotion here. Chaitu, I don't know if you know that uh, you are speaking exactly like a spiritualist. Congratulations to welcome to the spiritual world. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, guys, we, we are still left with six more minutes. Let's get to the uh, let's get conclusions from everyone because I am sure uh, you all have wonderful points to say. So, mind and, speak, you should have said, Chaitu, I fear you are turning a spiritualist. That is the right way to say in this room, basically. So, I fear you are becoming a spiritualist. Thank you. So, <laughs> the, I am about to I'm enter the room, so let's get I'm capable of uh, spirituality. Uh, 
I'm not getting it, Chetu. Okay, Chetu, let's start with you. Let's uh, let's start the conclusions from you, and then we'll uh, end up with Shiva. So, Chetu, what's your conclusion for, for this topic? I know you have just joined. So forget about what others have spoken. Uh, in case, uh, uh, it's just give your own conclusion. Thank you. Yeah, fear. Fear is a, is a very real emotion, and you know it. Uh, we can talk about quality of fear, right? You know, rather than you know. we can talk about degree of fear and quality of fear and and uh, where it's needed and where uh, it's not and we uh, and it's, it's just one of the factors that uh, you know that drives us uh, or helps us you know uh, you know su- survive things and go through things but um, i mean for example let's say that uh, you know uh, a guy is afraid of uh, you know skydiving and uh, the, there's another guy uh, you know who's not and let's say that you know there's an accident and the guy dies you know the other guy dies and you're trying to skydive so in that case uh, you can say that uh, you know the, the the fear of uh, heights has uh, you know saved uh, 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 the guy who, who didn't do it uh, or you uh, or you can take a case where you know a guy uh, you know uh, the, the other guy who's not afraid of uh, you know skydiving has a wonderful time and uh, you know you can say that uh you know the guy who didn't has missed out on uh, such a, such a nice opportunity to have a, uh this adrenaline rush so it's it's just it's just one of the factors so yeah it's just an it's just another uh, emotion right uh, or a range of emotions that we have you know uh, identified as fear so, all right yeah. you you said what come as you said as fear is a tool that's nice thank you chetu radham uh, give your conclusion in one minute thank you yeah thank you uh, i feel fear is uh, not mere uh, thinking of uh, what is emotionally being done like say example steve jobs thinking about that life is shortened uh, thinking of back i feel that uh, the emergency situations of snake or tiger that is also fear uh i cannot call it a biological response because even uh, by uh, fear uh, the fear that is mentioned of steve jobs thinking about that is also a biological response because there the vernix area uh, glutamine receptors are being <laughs> released and condition response is being acted so everything is a biological response you cannot classify that <laughs> yeah that's it <laughs> you have an answer for everything through biology that's amazing thank you gadam i we need you to participate more in session so that we have a bridge between science and philosophy thank you thank you a lot subhash you have any any final conclusive statements can you please do that in 30 seconds i'll come in then like i i need more time for a conclusion okay sure i'm thinking sure. okay keep thinking karen what is your conclusive statement please Hi yeah 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 uh, we still all over the place because we're talking of different levels of awareness so if you uh the fear if you are able to use it as a tool then you know already you are separate uh from that fear so you're using it as a tool you are not that fear because you're able to use it as a tool so then the next step uh, would be then if i'm not um if i am not that fear then i don't have to carry that fear forward i can experience in the moment and then let it go because a uh, fear is only useful as a tool in that moment uh it is giving you the message danger or be careful or whatever the message be, be may be in that moment so only use it in the moment don't carry it forward with you and store it in your memory because every situation is different and also new ways of knowledge might uh even uh make you look at the tool as not needed anymore and i'm going to leave it at that amazing thank you so much karen i know it it's a humongous topic to discuss within a limited time but uh, to make sure that we get the best out of the people uh, we i have to i had to go like this i'm really sorry but uh, those are fantastic points karen thanks a lot 
Dr. Notel, uh, first of all, uh, wonderful display picture didn't tell you that. That uh, that's nice display picture. So go ahead and tell us uh, your conclusion statement on this topic, please. Thank you, thank you, my speaker. For that um, so regarding the topic, I would make some statements right now uh, as a conclusion things. And if anybody has questions, you can contact me. Um, so I think fear as an emotion, as a state of mind, is absolutely real, and uh, um, the fear can be rational or irrational. Uh, that is a different point. And depending upon your mental ability to remember things and analyze things you carry the fear to the future and that may reduce your response in terms of fear to the same event that has happened in the past so you may fear more or you may fear less uh, but this really depends upon your memory and other um, cogn cogn cognition abilities yeah i will leave it there thanks thank you so much dr Notin. kameji what what's your conclusion statement please yeah, fear is an emotion and uh, fear, uh, there are intensities of fear, what you can do, small things, you can make it as very big in your mind, and the scale of how you are experiencing fear changes, but definitely fear is an important tool, and uh, if you don't have fear, uh, it might make you a fool. Amazing. Subhash, you, you have, have you got your final statement ready? No, I just want to say it's my personal experience that, uh, I mean, fear made me to, you know, find myself more. Uh, I, I can't give a generalized statement, but uh, I have kinds of fears where, you know, you know, it made me to know about myself more. And I don't, I don't want to see it in a generalized term that, you know, it's not real or unreal or not real. So it's kind of, you know, I see it in a biological perspective that it happens in our brain and um, certain, you know, other, the outside world also affect us. But I can't see it in a utility purpose. It's a kind of biological issue. Okay. Thank you, Subhash. Shiva, uh, get ready with your conclusive statement. And I have one final announcement. I would like to thank Neera, Hubert, Manjusha, Vinay, Srinivasji. I sorry I couldn't invite you up because we are closing the room. Please excuse me for this, forgive me. Uh, Kirti, uh, thank you for listening. And Nikila, thanks a lot for listening uh, for a, such a long time. Deekshita and Tej. Tej, sorry, couldn't invite you up. Please don't mind. Uh, and others who are listening, do, uh, if you are not following me, please do follow so that I can add you into the future conversations. And uh, if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please uh, subscribe. Uh, that will be awesome and uh, we can have uh, you know as we have more people we'll have more speakers and then uh, more comments in the YouTube uh, and then we can continue discussion there as a community uh, thanks a lot for listening and uh, I will read out what's happening in the ch communications here in the chat window uh, what let me get the best okay Hubert had a wonderful uh, you know comments which, which he has did uh, he says, uh, fear has to be real with, within the person, yet the outcome of events might justify the personal fear or show the being unsoundly based. Yes, uh, an individual fear could be real. That's what Monica says. And I think it's worth separating awareness from knowledge and separating knowledge from understanding. That's what Hubert thinks. And he's also saying and separating understanding from wisdom, wisdom being the effective or a practical application of understanding um that's amazing thanks a lot uh hubert and i would also like uh, thank ivo who has given his statement fear is perceived but nevertheless a good instinct to foster an abundance of caution at all times amazing amazing conversation thanks a lot uh everyone now shiva uh, once you once you're done with your conclusion maybe uh you know we can go ahead and close the room Shiva, all of you. Yeah. Um, basically, what we consider fear, when you remove the word fear and see what uh, the, this emotion and this feeling of fear is directly in the present moment, you actually can see that it is just a moment of energy and uh, a group of thoughts, mind and identity in combination. Uh, so when you look into it, actually it... Uh, it loses power over you because we inherently identify ourselves with that emotion 
and we give power to it. Inherently, it does not have any power over us. So the more you look into your fear directly, the more fear goes away because knowledge comes out of it. You go into the core of uh, that fear. When you remove the word fear itself and look at the motion of that energy, then you see that it is just a energy that you labeled it and you are resisting it. So when you don't label and don't resist, when you look at it, it changes completely into a different way. So fear is a, actually a tool to um, break all the shells of identity that uh, we created within us. Thank you so much, Shiva. That's the, you kind of summarized what uh, others have spoken. And uh, I'm ending the room in one, two, three. Namaskaram. Thank you.